Hello friends, welcome to Gurney of the Creekside. I am Jenny and welcome to this week's nursery tour. We um, got two great loads of plants uh, end of last week and so we wanted to share them with you along with some other fabulous things that are here at the nursery. So remember, we do these nursery tours so folks who are coming to us can actually see what we have that is growing, blooming, and thriving here at Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina. Right now, as of this moment, the uh, end of February, our only days that we are open are Saturdays from nine to three. We would love for you to come see us. So without further ado, let's talk about some fantastic plants. Um, right beside of me here, flanking kind of both sides of the entrance in here, these are sprinter boxwoods. Sprinter boxwoods are fantastic. They um, are from Proven Winners. We use these a lot. I have these in the um, our back patio area. They are just a wonderful um, Japanese style boxwood. So that means that they're gonna be naturally disease resistant to that boxwood blight. They are going to be for sun or shade, hardy in zones five to nine and anywhere between two to four feet tall and wide. So when you hear that measurement, especially with boxwoods, if you wanna keep them at two feet, great. If you wanna keep them and let them grow to four feet, great. Uh, boxwoods, of course, respond really well to being pruned. So you can keep them whatever size that you want. Um, and just really easy, low maintenance. You will notice that they'll take a little bit of a bronzing um, look to them this time of year. Completely natural. Once the warm weather um, returns on a regular basis, they will turn completely green and be just fine. So if your boxwoods have a little bit of a bronzy tip to them, no worries. It's just their winter color. They'll be fine. Um, spireas are starting to emerge. These are ones that we um, have are growing ourselves. But spireas, of course, are deciduous. This is double play candy corn. They are deciduous, but they are starting to go ahead and put out some new foliage. So that is really fun and exciting. Uh, candy corn, of course, is that wonderful, gorgeous color of a spirea with those hot pink blooms. It is hardy in zones four to seven, even though we are a zone seven B, it does really well for us. Some plants will be kind of iffy on that borderline. This is one of those plants that does well, and it's only one and a half to two feet tall and wide. So have that, it is doing well. This is a new one we just got in. This is the uh, Swing Low Distillium. Making sure I get my, my names right here. Yeah, swing low distillium. Distilliums are wonderful if you are looking for an evergreen shrub that is extremely low maintenance. You really do not prune this because it is supposed to have that natural wide, a little bit of that weeping effect. And I think maybe Jerry is, can show you that this time of year is about to bloom. Now, the blooms are not, it's not like an azalea. They're very small, that kind of that maroon color it's just a little hint of color. Why you're buying a distillium and this swing low is because if you're looking to fill in a lot of area with, you know, get your most bang for your buck, distillium is a great one because it does go wider than it is tall. We have them on our bank um, behind the barn. They are wonderful. Very, very low maintenance. This is gonna be in uh, full sun to part shade two to three tall, but four to six wide. So, ha ha ha, look at that. Love this. Now, um, oh, one, I don't know if my microphone is picking up all the frogs. They're croaking, so that is definitely a sign that spring is on its way. But another sign that spring is coming is that the forsythias are starting to put on buds. Their little buds are beginning to swell Forsythia, of course, um, we called them yellow bells when I was growing up. This is show off. Show off is um, a wonderful one from Proven Winners. It is the bloom coverage on this thing is just massive. I mean, the whole stalk, you won't even be able to see any of the brown. It will be completely covered in yellow. These are hardy in zones five to eight, sun to part shade, and the show off is going to be one of the biggest ones at five to six tall 
and wide. So it's, you can tell from its growth, it's gonna be tall and wide. If you have forsythia, don't prune it until after it blooms. Because if we were to prune this right now, we're gonna cut off a bunch of our blooms. So don't do that. And over here, I'll show you in a minute, there is um, a little petite version. So if this is too big, stay tuned for Sugar Baby because Sugar Baby is coming up next. Now I'm gonna ask Jerry to, to back up. Nope. <laughs> or he's gonna swing. He's gonna swing you. Huh. These are, these beautiful ones, big, huge, massive pop of color. Our sunshine ligustrums. We love these plants. These are um, just a rock star here in the south for us. They are evergreen, even though their foliage would make you think that they might be deciduous because it's very soft and it feels like it might be a deciduous leaf. It is not. It is an evergreen, full sun. The more sun you get, the brighter yellow chartreuse color it is going to be. If you have these in your yard currently, and you'll notice even some on this, right? So coming out of the winter, you'll have some, some, some bare stalks. This is the perfect time to prune them. We have, I think it's five um, sunshine ligustrums at our mailbox, and they've gotten too big. In the, probably the next week, I am going to prune them. So if your sunshine ligustrums are looking a little naked, and they're looking a little, <clears throat> excuse me, just a little spindly and not real full, perfect time to, comp like you can, you can prune them pretty severe and go ahead and fertilize them with some plant tone and they will flush out and be gorgeous. I'll have a video when I do mine so I can show you exactly, but um, yeah, now's the time to do that. So we've got those. Now, just back up. He won't just listen to me. He has to see, and then he's gonna fall over a plant. If he would just back up nice and gentle, then we wouldn't have this problem. Um, I wanna talk to you about uh, Sweet Talker. I'm not sweet talking to him very good right now, am I? Um, sweet talker, sweet talker. <laughs> I'm buzzing at him. Sweet talker is an evergreen viburnum, and you can see that she is in bloom. This is has been sitting out all winters long, all winter, winter long. So this is a completely natural bloom time for her. It is an evergreen. It will get um, just those really sweet little smells on it. It smells great. It's going to be a big girl. So she's going to be eight to 10 tall, three to five wide. So nice, big presence, gorgeous foliage on it. Wonderful. So, but it's only going to be for my Southern climates. It's only hardy in zones seven to eight. So it's a little bit limited, um, but it is a beautiful one. Great one. Um, if you're already thinking about summer color, we have got plenty of the Roses of Sharon. So this is the purple pillar beside of Jerry. We've got white chiffon. Just know that you folks who are coming, I think we've got pink chiffon over here. We have got tons of the Roses of Sharon. And we've had people ask us a lot, is do these um, set seeds and do are they invasive? For us in North Carolina, we have never had an issue with them setting seeds. I know in some areas, some of the old um, cultivars would do that. These do not. Proven Winters really tries to eliminate any of those pesky characteristics of plants. We have never had that issue, um, but there you go. Um, hydrangeas galore. We have got the hydrangeas. So Firelight Tidbit. So this is a new one last year. Um, tidbit is just that beloved hydrangea that is the small version of firelight. It is a panicle hydrangea. You can see that these have already been pruned for this year. They bloom on new growth. They are going to be hardy in zones uh, three to eight. They do really well for us, and they're only going to be two to three tall, three to four wide. Firelights, in, in our experience, are the one about the only panicle that will reliably turn to a beautiful pink rose color in late summer, early fall. Um, so Tidbit is just a nice little petite version of that. And then of course, butterfly bushes, we've got the Pugsters, we've got the Miss series. Now is a great time to go ahead and plant them, especially if you're here in the South, get those babies in the ground, get them well established before the cold hits. And you can't get much more Southern than a Magnolia. 
These are little gems. Little gems will give you all of those wonderful characteristics of our beloved magnificent magnolias on a smaller scale. We're going to plant one of these in the back in our backyard. Super excited about it, but little gem still has those nice glossy green leaves on top and underneath is kind of like a velvety brown will still bloom for you that beautiful smell like I said smaller size I think it maxes out at like 15 feet maybe five feet wide I don't have the statistics right in front of me but just know that if you have a um, more smaller space a little gem magnolia is a great one to do again now is a great time to go ahead and get them in the ground so they can get established before long oh, oh i thought they were there but the cherry trees the cherry trees in fact look we got cherry trees in so this is yes this is okami so look at that the okamis are putting on they're sweet little um, buds. So we have okamis, then we have, I don't know where they got them, or where they put them rather. There's okamis, there's Yoshinos, and there's, um, oh, there they are. Yeah, okamis, Yoshinos, Kwanzan. There we go. So the okamis are the ones that are already starting to put on some little flowers. This is Yoshino, which is putting on the little, yep, it's a little later, putting on the buds. And then you can see the big daddies, these right here, these are the Kwanzans. Um, all three of these cherry trees will do really well for us in this area. It truly depends on um, your bloom color, like your, the, the bloom that you're going after. So do some research, figure out which one you want, the Okami, Yoshino, or the Kwanzan. Obviously, the Kwanzan is um, the biggest tree right now, even though they're all in the same size container. This is a, whew, this is a good sized tree. I mean, they can't get much more like announcing of spring than a cherry tree blooming, right? Just gorgeous. Um, let's go back over here because we, this is not new, but they're getting ready to um we've got a couple of things okay so one we have the gibraltar this is a native azalea and you can tell that they are just going to be covered in flowers they have got tons of buds on them gibraltar um, these are deciduous azaleas or native azalea it is going to be clemson orange they are absolutely spectacular it is going to be um six to seven feet tall three to four feet wide, um, part shade to full sun. It's a beautiful one. And then we have right here is the Mount Airy Father Gilla. So this is a native plant that will do beautiful um, spring flowers for you. Obviously they're both deciduous, but if you're looking for some things that are unique and different to put in your garden, these would be some great options for you for sure. Now we're talking about the little guys, the forsythias, this is sugar baby. So you can tell just naturally that sugar baby is going to be smaller. But if, I don't know how close to you you can get, but it is absolutely going to be covered in flowers. All of those are little buds that will open up to flowers and be covered. When I say these plants are full of yellow and that you can't see anything else, that is exactly what I mean. So sugar baby is only gonna be like two and a half feet tall and wide. So this is a perfect pop of spring color in a small garden space. Love that. And then of course it will be um, a beautiful green foliage for the rest of your growing season. We'll just add some nice texture to your garden. All right, there's still more shrubs. I mean, we could sit here and talk about all the different hydrangeas, but that'll be the fun thing. Just know if you're looking for hydrangeas and those kinds of things, we've got tons of them. Um, somebody was asking me just on, I think they sent us a message through one of the outlets asking about the wind chimes. Yes, we still have plenty of the bottle benders wind chimes. Um, so no fret on those. They're doing well. Uh, the beds here are doing well. But let's come in the greenhouse right quick. I want to show you a couple of things. 
So the fans are on, so you'll hear those. But come on in. Everything is doing great. Um, we're getting at the end of the day, so that's why it's maybe a little bit darker in here. But the annuals are just taking off. They are doing really well. Um, look at this. Let's see. Oh, do we have one? This is the Artist Blue Azuratum. Getting ready to flush out with some color. Really nice. Um, somebody, somebody just said on, on social media, they were like, am I colorblind or that does not look blue to me, that looks purple. It's one of my problems too with the horticultural world. Their definition of blue is different than my definition of blue, but it's more purple, but whatever. House plants. House plants did great when we opened up this past week. See holes, that's where plants were. We've got to come in here and do some shuffling and rearranging. As far as the requirements for the house plants, they're very adaptable. So they can go anywhere from just bright light. Um, they can take some sun, of course, at all just um, medium water requirements. I mean, these are like house plants for dummies. If I can help, <laughs> if I can make them survive, then you can too. They are gorgeous and there's just tons and tons of different varieties of plants. Um, that's the one thing that we do love though about the plant company is they send us what is looking just gorgeous. So these house plants by Proven Winners are whatever is looking good when they ship them, that's what they put in. Um, love them, like these are some beautiful ficus trees. I had a customer and they were like, we have never seen this color of ficus trees before. And absolutely, I mean, they are just beautiful, easy, low maintenance, high performing, gorgeous. Absolutely fantastic. So let's move down here. I wanna give you an update on the container that I did. Remember I was showing you how to, to do a container and I'm happy to say, look at that. Look how happy that salvia is, nice dark green. We still have some leaves that are, you know, recovering that were probably damaged when we, um, when we first planted it. Again, if that bothers you, you can just come in here and snap them off. You'll see a little bit of color, dis, you know, discoloration on the edges, no big deal. But the euphorbia is growing, the lantana is looking better. Everybody's very happy. Again, we're not putting this outside until uh, end of April. We've got to make sure we get past the frost date. We do have a couple of perennials in here, and that is because these were part of the plant delivery um, end of last week, and they've got beautiful new foliage on them, new growth. And that night that they came, it got down to like 27 degrees. And if we were to leave these outside, then they would have gotten, um, that new foliage would have been burned. And we didn't want to do that. So we have got beautiful holly ferns. I love holly ferns because they are that beautiful evergreen fern, um, low maintenance, beautiful, nice and full, really nice um, structure in your shade garden year round. So we've got the holly ferns. Look at this wild berry euchra. Is that not just beautiful, that foliage on that? Oh, gorgeous. So wild berry, of course, gets its name from the beautiful color, the foliage color. It is going to be um, hardy in zones four to nine. It is going to be, let's see my sun, I can't see, sun to shade, really adaptable. And it pairs beautifully with this Lemon Love Euchra. So Lemon Love is another one um, that we carry. It's a non-branded um, Euchra, but it performs really well here in the South. It can handle our heat and humidity really, really well. Um, and then we had some autumn ferns. We went ahead and brought them in here too because they had um, some new foliage on them. Again, another great evergreen fern. It is a staple. All right, you wanna move outside? Sure, he says. We'll go through this door. 
I feel like there was something else I was supposed to tell him, Jerry. What else was I supposed to tell him? No, he didn't know. Um, yeah. And we're going to be bringing down, because you know we are a grower, so we are going to be bringing down more and more of our plants that we are growing. So there's always going to be something new coming down each week. Um, if you are looking for the strawberry plants from Proven Winters, these are ones that overwintered for us. Um, we went ahead and moved them up to a gallon last year. So this is Berry Treasure Pink. Let's see. I'm going to put it down so I'll, I'll be steady. Can you see though? Can you see that? Look, these spent the whole winter outside. These were not in a greenhouse and they are already starting to put on flowers. So Proven Winters has the Berry Treasure Pink, the red and the white. The only difference is, is the flower color. The fruit is still the same, but you get beautiful flowers from them. So that's really fun. Um, here is the red. Let's see, we got a little red one popping up. So you can see the flower difference here on the red. And these are ever bearing strawberries. That means they're not like what our local strawberry farm does, where they just come in in the spring and then the season is done. The ever bearing, they're continuing to produce more and more fruit as the season goes on. These do great in containers or you could put them in the ground. Um, but they're great, I mean, I've never, <laughs> we've ne we don't have enough plants for our family to like have, like sustain us with strawberries because every time somebody goes by and sees one that's even the slightest bit red, it ends up in somebody's mouth. So uh, they are fantastic for snacking. Uh, really sweet and delicious. All right, let's come over here to the pines because I wanna show you, um, we got some new hostas in and a couple of new perennials in that I wanted to, to show you. Um, we did get some more camellias. So if you were in the market for camellias, like we have right here, and you can see that they are have buds on them. This is Rose Dawn. So it's a beautiful, this is going to be a japonica because it has a big leaf on it and it's blooming now. So there you go. So if you need camellias, come grab you some camellias. Um, oh, is this, hang on. We've got, we've got foliage here. <gasps> you know what this is? These are the popcorn viburnums. So we have three um, popcorn viburnums right here. They are flushing out with new growth. So viburnums are also known as um, snowball bushes. So popcorn gets its name because the blooms look like big popcorn kernels or whatever on the um, on the bush so if you are looking for a snowball bush there they are right there now what's really look at these babies this is ginormous three gallon empress woo hostas now they are dormant right now but if you have a hosta in a three gallon container I can guarantee you it is going to be massive once it wakes up from its winter slumber. Empress Wu is already going to be one of your biggest hostas out there. So then you put it in a three gallon pot and it's going to be huge. So of course like a hosta, you know, gorgeous color, predominantly shade. If you get some sun, it can be morning sun and that's about it. Um, but we've got the Empress Wu's here. Um, and then tons of other hostas came in and we have the Stilbees. I don't even know where everything is. Um, <clears throat> we have a Stilbees. What else came in, Jerry, that we need to talk about? Trying to help me remember. Linton Roses. We have the Linton Roses. All of these things. So basically, this time of year when you're out in your garden center, you're looking to buy your supplies, your um, fertilizers to get ready because now really is kind of the beginning time for us here in the South where you need to go ahead and start feeding your perennials, your trees and your shrubs. Go ahead and give them some food. Plant tone is a great one. If you only have one, plant tone is great. Of course, you can use like your holly tone or your rose tone, those sorts of things for more specific applications if you like to. But now is a great time to go ahead and be fertilizing. If you need to do some little cleanup or tidying up of your perennials, go do that. Fresh layer of mulch, 
and planting. Plant, this is besides the late fall, this is probably the next most optimal time for you to be planting those perennial trees and shrubs in your yard, the bones. Now is the time to do it. So if you have been thinking of something, redoing something, or adding a plant to your garden, now is absolutely the time to do it. I feel like I'm forgetting to tell you something, but if I have and I'll remember it in five minutes after this, <laughs> We'll do it in the next video. But as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day, and we look forward to seeing you here at the nurseries on Saturday from 9 to 3 very soon. Y'all have a great day. Bye, friends.